Good morning. As I mentioned last week, uh, we, are this, uh, we are beginning the Bishop's Appeal. This is that annual fund that we do every year, so th this shouldn't be a, a, a big surprise. This is something that we do routinely. And we do it for a special reason, so that we can offer the people of our community something that we could not offer on our own. So there are things like counselors and camps and, and education opportunities and things that we can't offer as a parish. But, but if all of our parishes gather together, pool our funds, we are able to offer services to parishes and communities that we could never do on our own. So the Bishop's Appeal is a very, very important thing for us to support because it's the way that we support our parish and our communities, the people around us in a bigger way. So this past week, you should have received your Bishop's Appeal letter. If you, ha if you didn't, let, let us know. Uh, we didn't, we'd invite you to pray over that uh, and ask what you can give. We, we'd encourage you to at least give what you gave last year uh, and then maybe increase that of uh, $10, $20, maybe a little bit more if you can, because uh, to make up for those who may have lost their jobs and things during COVID, it's always good for us to be aware of that in this situation, because right now we're in a difficult situation. So if that has not affected your financial situation, maybe see that as a blessing, and maybe that will help uh, us be more generous in our giving. Generosity is so important. I would like to thank everyone who has given in the past. Uh, your, again, your generosity is very much appreciated. And rather than me talking a lot, I'll let the bishop say something. So we'll watch the videos now. Thank you. One of the most faith-inspiring things for me to witness is the way God uses times of great turmoil to do amazing things. Whether it's parting the sea while the Hebrews fled slavery, or Daniel escaping the lion's den, or at the very heart of our faith, Jesus rising from the dead. God always brings light to darkness and restores hope. In many ways, this is the Paschal mystery, and we are living it right now in the Diocese of Green Bay. This past year has brought great difficulty to many people, individuals and families, and entire communities. But God has a way of using the darkest hours to do the most amazing things. No matter what pain stirs in the world around us, with the love of Jesus in our hearts, we rise again. When I look around, I'm awed and inspired by the remarkable things being done in the name of the Catholic Church by faith-filled people throughout the diocese. And it's all fueled and funded by you and your generosity giving to the Bishop's Appeal. Clearly, the Holy Spirit is at work among us. There are so many stories I want to share that show how your gifts to the Bishop's Appeal are touching lives right now when it's most needed, perhaps needed more than it has ever been in our lifetimes. Together, we are rising to the moment and connecting people with the love of Jesus. Let me share four examples of how we are doing Christ's work during these trying times. First, we are connecting the underserved with much needed mental health services through Catholic Charities. Through the difficulties of this past year, Catholic Charities has launched a new and expanded model to reach more people in more places. Every dollar that is given to the Bishop's Appeal, we are able to allow people who are financially struggling to receive care, to receive hope from our services and not have to worry about providing financial money to hold the appointment. And they don't have to worry about me trying to sell them something. All I'm looking to do, or all we're looking to do, is to meet them where they're at, give them hope, give them inspiration. And if life is beating them down at the moment, if they're full of anxiety or frustration, we're able to be present in the moment and allow God, God to guide the conversation. I think that's what we're looking to do. I'm so moved by the good, compassionate, and much-needed work Catholic Charities is doing right now 
and by their commitment to bring these services to everyone in the far reaches of our diocese. I'm also inspired by a diocesan program called Reconnect to Inspire that has been touching lives and moving hearts, reconnecting people with Christ's light during a time when connection has been so very challenging. The Reconnect to Inspire experience in Winnicani and Amro went for four weeks during August. And the impact that it's had within our community has really been a good kickstart to our fall offerings, whether it's youth faith formation or adult faith formation. It's provided people comfort and empowered them to get on board with the virtual learning or maybe the courage to enter into a small group setting within our church or even just to get back into the pews at Mass. As followers of Jesus, we share his love for every person, and we want to make sure no one is lost, no one feels forgotten or abandoned. The pandemic has been particularly challenging for our youth, whose formative years have been so disrupted. Your contributions to the Bishop's Appeal have been vital in connecting with this critical and vulnerable population. So many easily could have been lost, but through the love of Jesus and the movement of the Holy Spirit, they're experiencing the concern, care, and the compassion of the Catholic Church. When people are in middle school and high school in particular, who you are then really shapes who you're going to be um, as a person for the rest of your life. Um, so I think that instilling Catholic beliefs in them right now and forming them as a morally good person and a good Catholic is so important because it shapes who they're going to be. These are the years that they're being formed, and so it's really important to form them correctly. Of course, we've all found it challenging to stay connected with the faith during the past several months. Some wondered whether churches would even survive, but we're actually finding new ways to thrive, new ways to reach more people. Using resources made available in part through the Bishop's Appeal, we began televising Mass last spring it has proven to be a powerful way to connect with people who often feel lost or forgotten, particularly those who are homebound in nursing homes and in prison. I have taken many phone calls from family members of people who are homebound that have said, my mother or my father can't get to Mass every week. This is such a wonderful gift that the diocese is able to do this. And the fact that Bishop is the person who is having Mass so impactful to them. You know, I, I also want to just tell you that at Channel 5, they took every single card and letter that they got and they hung it up on the wall so that everyone there could see the impact that they were having. Um, this is making a difference in people's lives. This might be the most important bishop's appeal in the last few generations. If the pandemic has taught us anything, it has taught us that the world needs the Catholic Church now more than at any point in our lifetimes. The world needs the love of Jesus. As Catholics, we are being called to rise up and to bring that love to our neighbors and our communities. I ask you to prayerfully consider how the Holy Spirit calls you to share your gifts and your resources at this critical time. Please listen and respond generously to the voice of Jesus in your heart. Like the Hebrews entering the Promised Land, like Jesus on Easter morning, like the Apostles on Pentecost, together we rise again.
Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Holy Family Parish for the celebration of the Holy Mass. We have a few announcements. For the Learning Center Capital Campaign, if you are unable to financially support the project, please still fill out a pledge card and check that you will pray for the success of this project. This project will help our parish children stay close to Jesus. Extra pledge cards can be found on the table in the narthex. All are welcome to hear Father Tom give a talk on the liturgical year and theology of Lent today at 1 o'clock until 2 o'clock. There will be youth events for any attending children. The 31st annual Holy Family Fish Fry will be Friday, February 26th. Enjoy perch, pike, shrimp, haddock, or a fish sandwich. Due to the pandemic, there will only be carryouts this year from 11 a.m. until 7.30 p.m. There is a sign-up sheet in the narthex if you would like to donate food or volunteer for this event. Join the Faith Formation Team in the Social Hall after 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Mass today for information on 2021 summer camps, open to ages 6 through 18. Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday. Mass times are 8.30 a.m., 4 o'clock p.m., and 6.30 p.m. We gather together today, as we do each Sunday, as the body of Christ, Jesus called us to love God with our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Let Christ in the Eucharist bring us the strength and courage to truly become the body of Christ in the world today. Our opening hymn is number 346, Joyful, Joyful, we adore you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Christ Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who teach us that to abide in hearts that are made just and true, grant that we may also be so fashioned by Your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing to You. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, Your Son, who lives and reigns with You in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab or a pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, Unclean! Unclean! As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt, all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourselves to the priest, and offer your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Love, love is in the air. This is the weekend of love. Many guys will go out this weekend and purchase items that they only will purchase at this time of year. Many ladies will go in their closets and pull out that special clothing that they will use only this time of year. Yes, love is definitely overflowing this weekend. And you all, know, you all know why, right? It is that thing that comes only once a year. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. It's the opening of sturgeon spearing. Yes. Most of the people that I know and I grew up in Darboy loved the sport of sturgeon spearing. I myself, for 18 years, when I was younger, also hunted that prehistoric fish. I sat in a shanty, peering down in a three-by-five hole for many, many hours. This coming Wednesday is also Ash Wednesday, where we jumpstart our Lenten season. And you know there are three pillars of Lent, and that's prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And with anything in life, we need to set goals when we set out to do something. In sturgeon spearing, the main goal is to catch that sturgeon. As we approach Lent, we should also be setting goals to achieve our spiritual goal of increasing our love for Jesus Christ. As I was thinking about my goals for this Lent, it started to occur to me that there are a lot of similarities between sturgeon spearing and prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. So let's take a quick look at them. The first pillar is prayer. In Lent, we are called to deepen our prayer life. For some people, this, me, this may mean beginning a habit of daily prayer, setting aside each day, setting aside some time to share our hopes, our joys, our frustrations, and our, our love for God. Now, now, how does prayer compare with sturgeon spearing? Well, you both have, both of them have, you have to be mentally tough to do it. In sturgeon spearing, you have to get up very early in the morning and get out to your shanty before sunrise. You spend six hours a day intently peering down into the water. Now, this can be done all alone with no one else so you can better stay focused on the decoy floating in the water. In prayer, you also have to be mentally tough, getting up early, keeping your mind focused on the prayer, not letting your mind wander, but staying focused on Jesus and the intention that you may be offering. Like sturgeon spearing, prayer too can be done with family members and friends, enjoying each other's company, sharing sturgeon spearing stories, techniques, 
and encounters. Prayer can also be completed in a group of people. Mass that we hear today is said to be the perfect prayer. We come to Mass with our personal families, with our parish families, and with our friends to worship our God, to hear his stories of our salvation, and to enter into the celebration of the Paschal mystery of our Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe one of your goals, not only is it to attend Sunday Mass, but also make a point to attend one weekday Mass. We are even offering a 6.30 a.m. Mass on Tuesdays for those who would like to come to Mass before work or before school. If you have children at home, having a family rosary or a Divine Mercy Chaplet on Sundays is a great thing for the family to do. If you are interested in doing something with a small group, there's a Mary Mantle retreat that will be happening on Monday nights. And for men of our parish, the parish is hosting a video series called Into the Breach, where each week we'll be reviewing ways that Catholic men can go closer to our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a 12-week series that will start next week on Saturdays at the 6 a.m. men's group, but we'll also be doing it on Sundays after the 10 a.m. Mass in the social hall for those guys who don't quite want to get up that early in the morning on Saturday. Each session will last about an hour, so on, on the Sunday sessions, you will still be able to go home in time to have lunch with your families. In sturgeon spearing, the main goal is to catch that sturgeon. What will your goal for prayer be in Lent? The second pillar of Lent is fasting. So, so why do we fast? Fasting is more than a method of self-control. The pangs of hunger can remind us of our hunger for God. Both fasting and sturgeon spearing are physically demanding. For sturgeon spearing, getting the shanty out on the ice, fighting the cold, the wind, and the snow to get the shanty set up, and making sure you don't fall in that hole after you get a cut, which I've seen happen, can be very exhausting. During our Lenten journey, we are also called to fast on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Now this means having one regular meal and then having two small meals that may make up one and refraining from snacking between the meals. And also we are called to abstain from eating meat on all Fridays. Lent has traditionally been a season where we give things up, maybe sweets or our favorite foods, in order to focus on the sacrifice that Christ has on the cross. This Lent, what is your fasting goal? Almsgiving is the third pillar of Lent, and this is a way to show our gratitude for all that God has given us, and a realization that as a body of Christ, which we all are, it is never just me and God. Through our prayer and fasting, we come to a deeper understanding that the needs of all are the responsibilities of all in the body of Christ. The corporal works of mercy, feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, clothing the naked, or caring for the sick are basic elements of our Christian way of life. So how does this compare with sturgeon spearing? Well, during sturgeon spearing, everyone always has that one buddy who comes out to the shanty without any food or beverages with him. So because you have extra, or we have extra, we, sh we share our, our supplies of the nutrients that he needs for the day, especially when it comes to the beverages. Our Lenten journey calls us to be generous with our gifts that God has given us. What is your goal for almsgiving 
in Lent. The final comparison I'm going to give about sturgeon spearing and our faith is the main goal of sturgeon spearing is to have that encounter with a fish that spends a majority of its time on the floor of the lake or the bottom of the lake. Most years, we are unable to see the floor of the lake because of the clarity of the water. So you have faith that that sturgeon will swim up to your decoy. Our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ is similar we don't see Jesus physically like we see one another. But we search for an encounter with him and have faith that Jesus will be with us always. And that leads me into today's gospel story. We hear the leper who, come, who came to Jesus kneeling down at his feet and begged Jesus by saying, If you wish, you can make me clean. Now, leprosy is a disease caused by a bacteria that affects the skins and the nerves. In advanced cases, the disease disfigures the body and ruins its normal appearance. As we hear in the first reading, if a person is declared a leper, he shall dwell apart from the community and live outside of the camp. Because of the condition, no one wants to be near them or see them in fear of touching them or catching the disease, or becoming unclean by the person's sins. But what does Jesus do? Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do will it. Be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately. Even though Jesus told a person not to share with anyone, that Jesus had cleaned him, the man goes out and proclaims his encounter with Jesus to everyone. Now let's look at this a little more closer yet. The leper searched out Jesus and came to him seeking an encounter. How about us? Do we search for Jesus seeking an encounter with him? Every time we come to Mass, we enter into that Paschal mystery, Jesus' suffering, death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven, into heaven, and receiving Jesus Christ truly present in the Eucharist, we encounter Jesus. In the Gospel story, Jesus heals the leper, but if we look at a story spiritually, the leper has a skin disease that made him unclean. What are the things that make us unclean before God? We are all sinners. We even profess this at Mass when we say, I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Another beautiful way of encountering Jesus is through the sacrament of reconciliation. When we go to confession and admit our sins, we have an encounter with Jesus. We come to Jesus and say, If you wish, you can make me clean. Through the words of absolution, we hear Jesus saying, I do will it. Be made clean. The Church teaches us, through the precepts of the Catholic Church, that we are to go to confession at least once a year. The season of Lent is a perfect time to make a goal, to go to reconciliation. In the second reading today, we hear St. Paul tell us, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Ash Wednesday is just a few days away. Now is a time to set our Lenten goals of prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and going to reconciliation. Do this for the glory of God.
We are the disciples of Jesus Christ. Knowing this, let us now publicly profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Each of us know that God loves us, with this in our mind, let us turn to him with our prayers and our petitions. For all members of the church, may the Holy Spirit draw us ever more deeply into the communion for which we are made. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, May God give them the fortitude in working to promote peace and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving broken relationships or the loss of a loved one, may God's presence offer comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the bishop's appeal, that the people of our parish will see the appeal as an opportunity to extend love and service beyond our parish and local community boundaries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this faith community discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, may God grant them strength and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people in the Holy Family Parish boundaries, both the living and the deceased. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God in heaven, we come before you with these and all of our prayers. Grant them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please join in singing number 269 in the Missalette, One Bread, One Body.
one Lord of all. One call of blessing which we bless. And we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will a source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so, they, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join in singing our communion song number 247 in the Missalette, Gift of Finest Wheat. <laughs> Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you who are unable to be present at the celebration of Mass today. A prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. 
As Greg mentioned, as Deacon Greg mentioned in his homily, Lent is coming up. Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday. And we focus during Lent very solidly on those three things. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Prayer, our relationship with Jesus Christ. Fasting, that learning self-control and temperance and virtue. And almsgiving, that radical generosity that we have to our neighbors, to our community, and learning to be generous. Plan what your Lent will be and you will have a wonderful Lent. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn will be number 259 in the Mistalite, Make Us True Servants. <laughs>